Hi everyone, in today's video, I wanted to show you how to get started um, in setting up your environment for deep learning. As a first step, uh, what I would advise you is um, don't try to set stuff yourself on uh, your own workstation with your own GPUs and all this stuff. Um, I would advise to go into uh, online self-managed uh, notebook solution, right? Like Collab or Kaggle and um, use that as the basis to learn. There's many benefits for this, but it look like this. You can see here, like we have a bunch of code. I'm fully online over here. You can see that it's connected to the GPU and it's all free. This whole thing is free. This is for like the look and feel of Collab. You can see similar thing with uh, the Kaggle type of solution. I'm sure there's plenty of others, um, but like here's how it look like roughly you have uh, an area where there's code that is written. It seems to be that there's also text and images that you can put in there. And it's kind of connected to um, via the internet to some machine that have everything set up for you. So that's what I would advise is to get familiar with online managed notebooks. So there's multiple reasons for this uh, to actually um, go for notebook solution is that uh, it gets you into the action faster because here you have no excuse, like everything is set up like it's all there. You just need to go and actually start to learn a bunch of stuff. The other thing that is cool is that you have access to um, GPUs. So this is also fantastic at no cost, right? So because most of these things have a free tier and generally you have just less weird problem to debug because you don't have to mess around CUDA and then install a bunch of package and all. You can have no experience in programming at all and still be up and running to do something. Okay, so if you had never saw a notebook before, we're gonna do a bit of a quick run around like what the whole thing is here. Um, and you can see here, this is the collab one. This is kind of the Kaggle one. It seems to be the kind of very similar format, a bit like Word versus Google Doc type of thing. So if we look here, you, you have cells where some stuff are, right? You see here, there seems to be a section. There's another section here, seems to be image text. Another text here, this is, seems to be code, right? Code again, over here, code. And it, it seems like you can add uh, either code or text into, um, into a collab uh, or a, whatever, a notebook, right? All of this is powered by Jupyter, which is kind of a no notebook technology that has like uh, kernels and, and stuff. And it's not that important, but here it's like, you can run cells and then the cells will do something, either a code thing or like a text thing. So the text thing, if you click on it and then try to edit, you get like all of this format. And this is a markdown, right? It's just a specific format to actually take the information and put it into some visual. Here you see, there's a bunch of, uh, of operation that you, um, that you need to know how to do to format your stuff properly. Uh, but Markdown is not very complicated to learn. Um, yeah, it's just literally a, a formatting uh, thing. So you have this, right? This this mode, a mode uh, that is text. And then you have this mode, which is code, right? And in this code thing, you can actually run a cell. So if I go like this, so I did shift enter, and now this will kind of start to connect to whatever server I'm at, you see I'm on a GPU right now at a T4, and then it will run this and it will tell me how long it took to run. And then what I did is I import TensorFlow, matplotlib, matplotlib by plot, and then I did a bunch of, of things, right? And within that cell, it has some memory of what happens, and then it kind of stop um, the computation. And now I can do the other cell or put the text here, and it will uh, go right where it left off. So if you have some uh, background in programming, it might look weird because usually a program you start it and it goes from start to finish, right? From top to bottom. Um, but here it always interrupt and stop um, a bit like a REPL uh, type of uh, motion. Anyway, so you have that, you can write your code here. And then here in this little thing, you always have some area where you can put file. In the collab version, it's interesting because it's connected to Google Drive. So you can put your stuff on your Google Drive and then just uh, load it. It's good because you don't have to mess around a lot of stuff. Um, and then you have some data that you can uh, already try to work with. You can always download the data straight into the code with something like wget, 
right? And then it's, it's kind of in there. Um, but in, in general, you can just uh, uh, drop it here and start to work on it. Um, this is the main stuff. And then lastly, you always have a section where you can change the type of resources that you, you're using. In this case, I can go here. I'm connected to here. I can change the run type. So I can have a CPU instead, a TPU, the version 2, a T4 GPU. Do many things. I can like write in Python or R if I want to. Many uh, notebook technology will have different type of, uh, of uh, option here. So if we look at the Kaggle version, it's kind of the same idea. And then here you can see what I'm using. I'm, I'm on a GPU uh, P100. It's on. There's a CPU over here also, um, right? And you can switch off whatever whatever like type of hardware you want. Um, this abstracts a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you don't need to know in order to get to work, which is the point is to actually get started fast. The cool thing with notebook is that everything is self-contained. Everything that we need is in here somewhere. It's easy to share with people. You can go over there and like just send them a link and it will just work. And it's interactive. Like you can make it so that it's interactive. It will generate the plot and then do the X and Y. X and y. Um, this is pretty cool. There's drawback though with the notebook uh, technology. First off, you have no idea how to set the stuff up yourself. So if you ever just use notebook and now you have to take your thing and put it into production, whatever that means for you, um, you're gonna have a hard time because now you have to install stuff. Then you have to interact with the hardware and you have to interact with a bunch of stuff that you haven't just seen. You don't even know here which version of Python you have. Uh, you can also get into like very weird bugs because like I said, it's like sequential. You can run this thing and then this thing and then this thing. But what if like you run this and then you go back here, you run that and it will work and then you go back up and you run this. You can get into like these weird bug about sequence of cells, um, which can make your, um, your whole analysis weird, right? So be wary about this. And third thing is you can just get weird bugs that you will not get if you were not in the notebook. Um, what I mean by that is that um, let's say you want to uh, uh, make a plot with matplotlib and then have some interaction with it. It might just not be possible to pop off a new plot in the notebook. Um, so you, you might get into like these rabbit holes when you're trying to do this one thing and then it just cannot work while on like uh, on another uh, self-hosted type of uh, technology, it will be uh, much easier. But overall, I think notebooks is the thing you should be uh, using. The benefit vastly outweighed um, the, the cost. Um, so what I would suggest here is I'm going to put a bunch of link into the description about like different notebook that you can see to have some idea about like the structure and then try to run them. Um, go into collab or Kaggle. I will put a bunch of the, uh, the two and then start to play with it. Even if you have no experience in, uh, machine learning, deep learning, or like Python, in, even in general, they will get you a feel about like, okay, like this is how this type of technology uh, kind of work. Um, in the next video, I will show you a bunch of notebooks and uh, how the analysis is structured. I'll take the, the best that I find uh, so that you can have an idea about like how a, a deep learning analysis is done. So I hope that this was useful and see you in the next video.